of Soul. This is Bass Talk Live. Your host, Mark Jeffries and Matt Pangrak. BTL is brought to you by Lawrence. Lures. Striking Lures. Bass Cat Boats. Ducket Fishing. Spro. AFCO. Big Buy Baits. Sunline. And TH Marine. BTL coming at you. Good Monday, everybody. Welcome once again to BTL Bass Talk Live, where we're going to talk bass fishing and anything else that we want to talk about. Matthew, we have a ton to talk about today. Yes, we do. We actually have a, uh, a great show, despite the fact that we are now in the doldrums of no bass fishing, which... Like we like to point out in the grand <laughs> scheme of life, you can get by without bass fishing. But heck, it's what we do. It's how me and you make a living. Well, you made a living at UPS before, uh, before it's not the how, bass I'm not, fishing game. I'm not game, shoveling packages right now, my friend. I hear you. But in, in the corporate world. <laughs> but uh, yeah, there's it's it's been interesting over the past several weeks to see how guys are continuing to bring things to the table despite uh no what is going on in the world with no yeah. tournaments while uh staying safe and doing the responsible thing so it's, yeah. it's interesting to see who is creative and who is not all right a lot to talk about first thing we got to get to i uh, want to let everybody know we're gonna have bobby lane on here in about 15 20 minutes uh, a good one he's gonna be live via skype from florida he can literally fish off of his living room porch like, he can fish out of his living room. <laughs> when like, I, was, I visited the house no, before. No, 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 no. When I was calling him yesterday, that's what they were actually doing. Yeah. When I was trying to get things set up, and they mm -hmm. had been, you know, yesterday was Easter Sunday. By the way, which was uh, somewhat, I don't want to say weird. It was just uh, watching our mass online mm -hmm. was quite different. Yeah. It, 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 but My parents I mean, are doing the same thing. Yeah, I mean, everybody, everybody across the nation, obviously, if you wanted to see your church service your easter service on sunday that was kind of the norm it was just uh it was different but uh we will get through this anyway good show with bobby lane no but uh, seriously he yeah. can sit in his living room oh, yeah. watch tv and bass fish <laughs> like from his couch like i cannot overstate how cool the setup that he has yeah. at the lane family house is yeah it's very cool very cool so uh good show with bobby then we're gonna have Shaw grigsby on tomorrow uh, a show that I'm really, really looking forward to. Preston Clark on Wednesday and Denny Brower on Thursday. So that's the lineup this week. Uh, first things first, though, dude, the feedback, the epicism of your victory over Jason Christie has been epic. I can't give it up to you. Uh, it, it, at the highest level, uh, that video was probably the best work that you've ever done from a production standpoint. Forget about that. It's the ass whooping that everybody's talking yeah, about. It was not a butt kicking. If you did, if you didn't un understand what happened, you know, if you followed the show for the last couple months, that uh, Jeffries had been giving me a hard time about being intimidated by Jason Christie. Nothing self else. Self inflicted. Was, he self inflicted. I admit it. I was a little intimidated by the guy, but I wasn't scared of him. But Jeffries kept yeah. saying I was scared of him, yeah. so I, I, I called him up and we had a one on one match. He accepted to it to, to prove that I wasn't intimidated, and then um, you got to watch. You got to watch the video uh but it's out now uh and i somehow managed to squeak out the w what we fished for seven hours uh on a lake in northeast oklahoma i say it at the end it's uchi uh and he did what he does he threw a, flipped a jig and threw a spinner bait a square bill and i got i had one little stretch mark i don't want to give it away for those that haven't seen it but <laughs> but i caught one and i said oh I said, I wonder if this would work if I caught one doing that, and it worked. Yeah. So, uh, big stuff. shout out to Jason for doing that, and it was awesome to get the competitive juices flowing. Like, I'm sure his he's a competitive guy, so he wanted to to win. I'm sure. Yeah. But I'm sure his level of in enthusiasm and excitement for this matchup <laughs> i'm sure me fishing against jason versus jason fishing against me there was a little bit different level of intensity yeah but i will say this so i have his sd card 
uh, that he filmed for, for seven hours with because yeah. that was the deal. We filmed yeah. out of separate boats. We never got within uh, we never got within uh, six feet of each other. Gotcha. So I get his car and I start watching and I like I watch my hook sets and I'm like, OK, that looks good. And then I watch his hook sets. I mean, this is this is no BS. This is what I noticed right off the bat. <laughs> the dude thinks he gets a bite. He jacks him. There's no feeling for it. There's no making sure. His mechanics and from hopping a jig or pitching a jig or casting a crankbait and reeling it to hook set, that split second is eons ahead of where I am. Go back and watch it. Well, that's I'm why like, he's made millions I'm of like, dollars, dude. Yeah, there's a bite. Let's get everything ready. <laughs> let's reel down. Let's check it again and let's set the hook. It just goes from nothing, bam. Yeah. Like, you hear my hook He's sets and it's kind of like thump. you hear his hook sets and it's like Phew. I mean it's like action yeah. hero stuff. Dude, that's why you're just not giving yourself enough credit for the amount of gratitude and accolades you should get for this victory because he's that good. All mm -hmm. right? Don't sell yourself short, dude. Should I say what I did then? What do you mean? What I in my <laughs> I got all excited <laughs> and and what what's coming up next week then? Or should we hold hold off on What's that? What's that? Oh, no. Listen up, dude. My phone's been ringing off the wall. People want a piece of you now. All right? And I'm going to tell you right now, right off the bat, I got another phone call late last night. He called me again this morning. We spoke this morning. The man, James Watson, wants a piece of you on Table Rock. Well, <laughs> here's what I did. I got. I was all excited, and then people were like, "Oh, it's awesome! It's awesome!" And I'm like, "This could be my thing." Like normal guy, Matt from BTL, take it on the big time pros in their environment. Yeah. So the first thing I did, which was, so Uchi was fairly level. Like Christie had grown up there. Like he said, he caught a ten pounder, he fished there hundreds of times. Hadn't been there in a while. Yeah. It's kind of a, a little bit of a neutral playing field. Not really. Not really. But. He had a massive amount of history yes, on that Yes, he leg. did. Okay. So I called up Jeff Creed and did the same thing with him on Murray, and yeah. he accepted on Murray. So now Good I deal. got one lined up, same deal against Jeff Creed on Murray, except here's the difference. Jason Christie said like 30 words during that. Like his biggest <laughs> trash talk over the entire thing was he boat flips a four and he goes, how about that, Pangrak? Yeah. Like, Jeff Crete's going to bring some trash talk, I yeah. feel like. You've got your work cut out so for So next you. week, Jeff Crete on Murray, and then Edwin accepted, too. <laughs> so I got, awesome. I got this Edwin so and cool. Crete lined up now. Oh, uh, you got Watson, too? Watson wants a piece of you. Dude, and, he, and Watson. On Table Rock. Okay. All right. So you got three lined up now. That's it, dude. It, it's epic. And it, it is out of the box. It's it's so cool. And what people don't realize, but they are coming to realize, is how good of an angler that you are. Well, let's not get carried away. But here's the main point of this thing. <laughs> These are all within two, you know, less yeah. than an hour to two and a half hours from the house. Uh, there is no meat for breakfast. There is none of that. It's I get have, to the lake, get after it. Yeah, it's yeah. it's a, a smaller area. We don't stop to get anything. We don't meet we yeah. show up and it's like you're going out for a day on yourself so that was kind of my idea of how i was like well how can you get around this and keep the competitive juices flowing all these guys very competitive guys yeah uh so great stuff really man. looking forward I, to I, it. I, I i was so impressed with everything that you did on the jason christie one and i know the it, fans out there the feedback has been enormous and dude you you've struck gold on this but more importantly i think people are really seeing how good of an angler that you are well the and, whole point and, is to entertain yeah. educate and engage yeah and i learned some stuff from watching jason from what re-watching it yeah. hopefully that's what the people learn i mean what you're going to see hopefully if this turns into the series yeah. is the difference of someone i mean i'm I've, i'm a very proficient angler i'm not that level <laughs> but I, <laughs> you're the better whole, than proficient the whole point is it shows you know kind of how different people go yeah. about the days and hopefully i'm a little bit relatable like it's kind of hard to relate to those guys who've been on on tour for 20 years because they've been doing the same thing for so long yeah i would have um, lost my ass if i would have had 18 to 1 bets out there rojas would have really <laughs> lost it he had 50 to 1 <laughs> bets and i also didn't realize um and i know i had bad audio i don't think uh did the rojas segment that you called me i th i don't think it even aired 
just on the live on BTO. No, it did air. Oh, it was. Yeah. It's in there. Yeah. The, uh, you guys didn't tell me that you hadn't talked to Jason. Because Jason said, oh, they never called at yeah, the end of the talk, day. Yeah. Well, I, when you had talked to me, you had made it sound like you'd already talked to Jason. Rojas was like, oh, yeah, you don't have a chance. <laughs> no. Well, I only had two at the time. No. Um, he was just being Dean. Dean. Anyway, if you haven't checked it out, please. It's you on need the, to- the Bass Talk Live You tube yeah. channel there's actually a series there this was the fifth video uh it's called panger 2020 which was supposed to be my 2020 season after the afco bass boot camp of 2019 so just like everyone else i'm trying to it's really ways good, to, to bring content and then really really good and then uh so i've i'm like all pumped up i got this going on next week and then remember brad was in studio last week with yeah. the bfe for the, yeah. the big bite baits bait that he designed and he gave me a pack of 25 so gonna I get called, the fans involved with called that. john suka from the bass tank and i said dude i got some of these baits he said yeah brad said he was gonna give me a couple he said i got a place i know you can catch some flipping i said let's go yeah. so it was within half an hour of the house we met up and i uh i caught it probably 12 to 15 uh flipping the new bfe a couple of minor tweaks nothing bad very impressed with how that bait handled but yeah. you know brad and i have kind of a one-on-one -on -one deal going who can catch the biggest bass flipping the big bite baits yeah. prototype bait that we're yeah. coming out with so i i'm on the board um i posted a picture of it. i don't think i said how big it was but you went with brad and brad's on the board and i think in a bigger way well it was almost a six pounder yeah mine wasn't almost a six <laughs> mine was a, a solid four but. And, and i'm telling you right now folks uh the place that we went to is a hidden gem. I'm not going to say a word about it. Let's just say we only saw two bass boats the entire day. It is a hidden gem in Oklahoma. It's not a big lake. It's not a small lake. Uh, but it was four-wheel fishing. You know what that is, Matthew? Yes, it's pa straight power. Just dirty, nasty, grimy, you know, spinnerbait, flipping, uh, going through the freaking just frozen tundra of lambo field it was freaking awesome and brad and i had a great great day we probably caught i don't know 20 25 fish all day long and uh he caught them really really good on the bfe so uh we're going back we're definitely going back and it is like i said a true hidden gem in oklahoma and one of these days we will give up the juice on where we're catching these fish at. so stay tuned to uh bradley holman fishing yeah. his youtube channel that's coming out and then the uh bass talk live youtube channel the uh my first the first time i rigged it i've filmed the whole thing first fish i caught it was kind of anticlimactic and i said this so i missed the first one a yeah. first bite and I wanted to catch one on the first flip ever with this bait because it had been like Man, no one greedy. had ever done. I know, but wh greedy. why not? That guy had just, I I had I just I hung with it. Jason Christie at a one-on-one. -on -one. I was thinking it, lightning could strike twice. I get it. But uh, the first one that I caught was like 11 inches long <laughs> and i was like oh man i was hoping it. but then like the second and third ones were were yeah. really good fish it's all good man great 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 stuff all right a couple of things and then we'll take a break and come back with bobby lane uh did you see the tweet and the video by mark zona yes about the motorized boats no longer allowed on waters in michigan but yeah. you can canoe and kayak and fish he's you just pissed can't. dude yeah he got uh johnny morris involved uh kvd yeah kvd so it's folks if you live in michigan you need to check out the video because what he did was he put the governor's phone number on this video and he wanted everybody to call the governor's office on on monday on today this is where being <laughs> smart comes into play here. Well, you, it doesn't make any no, sense, man. I know, but if, if when if you're you're doing this for your leisure, for taking food and bringing it home, be smart. Don't hang out with your buddies at the ramp. Don't yeah. go walk around and talk about it. Get by yourself, load your boat, drop your boat off, make sure you've got all your stuff so you got granola yeah. bars at the house so you don't have to stop at the gas station, go to a lake that doesn't require a lot of fuel because I understand, you know, the transmission and, and you know, you're stopping and moving. Do it to where it's all contained. Yeah. And, 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 and do your part. And you can't help the rest if it's politics. Yeah. But you can help show people that... We can do bass this. fishing yeah. and social distancing is totally acceptable to do from the front deck of a bass boat. Yeah, just check out Mark Zona's. I think it was on his Twitter feed. 
He might have put yeah, it on well, everything. You do, you do Twitter. I haven't logged onto Twitter in months. Yeah. It's it's also on his Instagram and his Facebook for those who <laughs> follow the more current social I, media. That's platforms. the only. I don't even really follow it. I just kind of glanced at it because I get emails saying here's what's happening and it's always on the yeah. twitter feed so that's how i found out about it all right uh real quick dude uh we will after we have bobby on and we wrap up the show we're going to talk about round number two of the classic show and i'm not going to get into it right now but i got four pages of notes all right i'd be I'm very interested to all right it. did you watch it i don't get espn too what? I get, listen, I get ESPNU and ESPN News and ESPN Classic and do not get ESPN what? or ESPN2. I sat down what to watch the show. What kind of network you hooked up with? I don't know. I sat down to watch the show <laughs> at 9 a.m. and I ended up watching. Here's the two things I ended up watching instead. Uh, While it was on, the only thing I had access to was the uh, U.S. Open for... Uh, ultimate frisbee <laughs> and then they have this kind of it's like a handball racquetball college national championship where you yeah. like have the smash ball and you like bounce it off a net and there's like two people and then the other person like you can touch it twice it's like yeah. a mix between volleyball handball racquetball and croquet yeah. and all sorts of stuff. That's what I ended up watching instead of it. So I'll be all ears as to your analysis of uh, it's, day it, two of the classic. It's, it's a little different than show number one, mm -hmm. but uh, I think people will be interested in hearing what I say. So to preface that, I have two questions for you. Yes. Well, maybe three. All right. What got more TV time? All right. Here's your options. The Bass Federation Nation, whatever it is, canoe commercial... Or kayak commercial, not canoe. Jeez, slap me in the face. During the show, you mean? During the show. Uh huh. All right. Or the kayak series. The kayak series promoting commercial. the new kayak series. Or <laughs> Hank Sherry. On day two. On day two. Now he's already leading it. Yeah. So the question is, what got more television time? The kayak well, I would series assume commercial Hank Cherry. or Hank Sherry? He was leading the classic. That would be the kayak commercial. All right. Who got more television time, uh, Brandon Lester or Hank Cherry? Bass really likes Brandon Lester. Brandon Lester, but... I like Brandon Lester, too. I got but, nothing against Brandon Lester. Dude, I'm telling you, the footage from Brandon Lester was epic. was really, really, really good. It was badass. All right, some of the stuff that happened... Uh, with with yeah. Brandon, and I'll Lester. be able to see this. I just I'll have to yeah. stick around and watch it at Jeffrey's. Yeah, I got a DVR. DVR. All right. The third thing is, who was the only competitor that they showed using and catching fish with a lure? Okay, besides Hank Cherry, that wasn't orange or red. The only competitors that they and there's a backstory uh, to this. Was it? It wasn't. Was it? Uh John Cruz? It was John Cruz. And you know what color the bait was? Shad. Well, it was blue and white. Yeah. It was like blue that and chartreuse. All right. The Here's the rest of, shad, of the story. Mark. All right. Here's the uh huh? That happens to be the color of a shad. Well, not neon blue. Okay. All right. I think of a shad color as a gray no, color. I think of it as more bluish. What? Even more is bluish white, maybe anyway, a little bit of chartreuse. I, anyway, we're in. going. We're uh, we're going to continue. Gray this. blue. Anyway, the shad color is blue. I was blue white. I was uh, because they did not mention this. I was enormously curious why John Cruz was using a blue and white crankbait, and everybody else was throwing orange or red. Does that not pique your interest? Yeah. This time of the year. Yeah. All right. So what do you think I did? He called up John Cruz. I did. Well, actually, I that in, that made him. me interested too because in my one-on-one -on -one match <laughs> with with Jason, yeah, he wasn't throwing a red one, yeah, and I was. All right, so it intrigued me, but they never talked about it. So the first question I asked him was, "Hey, man, did anybody ask you any questions about the crankbait you were throwing?" And he goes, "No, not really." Little John, no, it was a DD whatever. Help me out here. What brand? It was a Spro. It was a John Cruz DD. That's a little John. A deep dive. A little, little John uh, DD. Yeah. 
Get your Spro crankbaits figured out. I, I am not an encyclopedia of crankbaits, okay? He's got the little gun. He's got the little anyway, John MD. D, he's got was, the little John DD. Well, I'm glad you know that information. Foot right. of water. Here's the point I'm trying One to make. One has a circuit board lip, then the MD and the, the, rest, the DD have a rounded plastic lip on there it. There you have it. All right. The rest of the story is nobody really talked about that crankbait that he caught. Some really, really good fish that helped him out that day. The rest of the story is, folks. That was the only deep diving crankbait he had in his boat. It wasn't a color thing. It wasn't a, uh, it was uh, a it, depth thing. It was a depth thing. It was like it was the only bait that I had that would run greater than 10 feet. So I tied it on, and what the heck, man? They started whaling on it. Huh. How cool is that? Yeah, that is cool. Very, very cool story from John Cruz. So I, I greatly appreciate him responding to my request. And uh, that is a neat, neat kind of behind-the-scenes story about that crankbait. The other thing that I want to mention real quick, and we'll get into it more, is the difference between Davy Height and Mark Zona breaking down what's going on. There is a huge difference, but both of them, dude, they got it dialed in. They're very uh, complimentary of each. They not I, like, oh, good job. Like they complement each I, other. I, they I, work. They mesh together. I'm telling you well. right now. The first half of the show was done by Davey. The second half of the show was done by Mark. Both totally different styles. All right, but the way that they they broke down what was taking place post tournament. Uh, uh, quite obviously, they're, they're they're the best in the business, dude. They, I mean, and and they people got it dialed in. I hope. The, the, the comments that I made from the first show, I was adamant about saying that I did not have anything against what the personalities were doing from a, a, a professional standpoint. It's just the fact that I think that the format should be different. Mm -hmm. All right? Of the show. Of the show. But the way that Zona broke down the second half... Uh, there was, uh, I, let's just say, a little bit more detail than what Davey went into, but a different style. Dude, it was freaking epic. It, it, it was it was 100% five-star, and there are very, very few people that even come close to the way that Mark breaks down. And I'm not saying that just because he's a friend and, and we've known each other for a long time. If you did not watch that classic show... Please pay attention to the way, especially post-tournament, that Mark breaks down everything. It was phenomenal. I, I get frustrated when they throw Google Earth up there because one, if you didn't see the original one where they take off from, mm -hmm. there's no labeling on that Google Earth map. So you have, unless you're just totally 100% familiar with Lake Gunnersville, you have no idea where they're going on Google Earth because yeah, there's no labels. And an effect. All right, but what Mark did is Mark was very descriptive on the areas that these guys were fishing what? in. How long, how hard is it to Google Earth the Browns Creek riprap? Dude, listen, <laughs> listen. I, I, see, you go back and forth. You go back and forth. Yeah, an expert might know that, but what about the novice that is watching <laughs> no, this? No, I understand. All right, see, you can't I, go I back and just, forth, dude. I was just saying. Oh yeah, okay. go ahead and, and and put it in reverse. I there, mean, my there's friend. two things that are visible from space. Yeah. The Great Wall of China, the Browns Creek Bridge. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I, it, it, you just need to watch it. Would right? you not say that is the most famous stretch of riprap uh, in the country? Like, if you were to name, like, throw out the monkey box, throw out Beeswax Creek that yeah. still gets publicity from it, throw out... Uh, I'm trying to think around the world, uh, around the country. Would you not say the Browns Creek Bridge on Lake Gunnersville, just as far as community hole tournament yeah. fishing spots over the past 20 years, is the most famous spot in America? Yeah. Yeah, it's up there, dude. You look at, at at Elite Series, FLW Tours, Costas, Classics. Now, I know Howells was Spring Creek, but... Yeah. Can you name of any other any other uh, places that would even rival Rip Rap? No, wise? just sp spots. spots? The Monkey Box. Yeah. I I off the top of my head, no. But it's early and it's Monday and hell, I couldn't even remember what crankbait that was. <laughs> I'm trying to think of uh let's see here some of the lakes. Ah. I mean, for a period of time there before they rebuilt it, the, 
sailboat bridge was big time mm-hmm. in Grand Lake. Like, isn't it like, isn't there like Mud Creek on Rayburn? Or Toledo, yeah, Toledo Black Bend. Forest. Toledo Bend on, or isn't it like Mud Creek on yeah. Toledo Bend? Black Forest on Rayburn. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure there is. You know, we just have to think about it. But anyway, uh, we will talk more about the classic, a couple other things. But yeah, dude, they were running that kayak commercial. <laughs> They're pumping it. All the time. It was unbelievable. Nine times, I think, is what the number was. <laughs> And sometimes during the same segment, it I was got crazy. nothing against the kayaks. I'm I, all for it, but man, I would love to see him run some Bass Nation stuff. Yeah, I would love to see him pump the Bass Nation. The, the, I guess the money just must not be there. Honestly, I mean that's what it has to come down to. There has to be more money yeah. in the kayak series than there has to be in the Bass Nation. Yeah. Because you talk about growing the grassroots with potential to reach pro from an everyday guy yeah. and build up that. Like, that's the Bass Nation. I want to see nine Bass Nation commercials and, like, three or four kayak commercials. Because you got a bunch more people who I think who are on the verge of something that are way more likely to sign up for the Bass Nation and fish it than they are to go out and buy a kayak and start fishing that. But it must be sponsor-wise and dollars in. It's got to be something where the kayak brings in more than the Bass Nation and they just keep the Bass Nation around. Uh, We'll see. And just keep it. We'll see. To the I side. think it's a vital part of uh, the future. I don't think it is. Game. I know it is. Yeah. All right. We'll see. Do you see. agree with me on that? Hundred percent, man. Just weird. See, they always say that we argue, man. We agree on a lot of a stuff. A reason why the Bass Nation isn't just hammered home. Like yeah. it'd be every other commercial. I'd have <laughs> Paul Mueller, that's a tad bit too Paul much Mueller, there. in a button-down shirt walking out. <laughs> Hello, half million Bassmaster members. I'm Paul Mueller. Do you know why I'm here? Yeah. It's because of the Bass Nation. Then yeah. I have Caleb Summerall break out of the woods. You know why I'm here? Yeah. Because of the Bass Nation. And then Paul and Nick I got you, man. Rolls in. I got you. Know you. Why I'm Your here? point is well taken. Because of the Bass Nation. Yeah. I like it. All right. I got four pages of notes, though. We'll get into it after Bobby Lang. Coming up right here. Everybody stay tuned. We'll be right back. search for the best combination of value and performance is over. It ends with Elite TI2. From high-res views of active imaging to mapping in real time with Genesis Live, the high-powered performance of Elite TI2 continues to dominate. And now, wirelessly share sonar waypoints and routes between TI2 displays. Get up to $200 cash back when you purchase a Lowrance Elite TI2 or hook reveal display. Visit Lowrance.com slash offers for details. Yeah, you care about gear ratios, inches per turn and ball bearings, but most importantly you want reliability and dependability in the equipment you use. Lose doesn't cut corners when it comes to the gear they build. The new Speed Spool LFS is the best $99 reel in the market. Go see for yourself. We've paired one of the most iconic hulls in the history of bass boats with a proven lineup of trusted accessories. We're bringing you best-in-class value and performance, leaving others in your wake. Turnkey value, turnkey performance. The Pantera 2 is an overachiever in the 19-foot category. Once you hit the throttle, you'll feel the rush, and there's no looking back. Kevin, what are you doing here? Oh, I'm just filling in for Billy. I need a 660 Shad crankbaits in uh, the Series 5 model. We're out. You're not out. You got all kinds of them right there. We're out. Kevin, I need six. Have a lollipop. I do not want a lollipop. Have a lollipop. Do you have it in sexy shad color? At Duckett Fishing, we have assembled the top pros in the country to help us design rods to give you a competitive advantage. Castability, strength, durability, action, sensitivity, weight and balance, and consistency. Combine that with the best warranty in the industry and you have rods that are pro-driven. Duckett Fishing, pro-driven. 
I want to share to you a new product we got coming out from Sunline. This is the FC leader size spools that we have now. Um, we've gotten a lot of requests for this. A lot of you guys use fluorocarbon for leaders only, myself included. And one of the problems you have is when you have a 200 yard spool, that might last you two, three, four years. You might even lose it before you even get done with the spool. So we've gone to a little smaller spool. These are 50 yard spool sizes. You know, that way you're not holding your line on forever. You can keep your line fresh, use it when you can. It stores real easily in the boat. We got all of our popular line sizes that you're used to with our sniper from five to 14 pound. If you guys are looking for a line that you're only tying for a leader, Go check out Sunline FC Leader 100% fluorocarbon and give it a try. All right, we are back on a Monday, kicking off the week. Another good week here on BTL. Bobby Lane today, Shaw Grigsby tomorrow. Preston Clark Wednesday and Danny Brower on Thursday. Jam-packed, Matthew. That is quite the uh, quite the lineup of. Uh, would you consider Shaw Grigsby a power fisherman? What would you put? Ca ca what would you categorize? I mean, he's oh, a he's sight one, fisherman. Yeah, he's one of the greatest sight fishing anglers in the world. But would you, if you had to categorize him, would you put Probably him a power in, in in the power fishing category? Very versatile. Very versatile. I would have put Bobby Lane in the power fishing category. I feel like, in a way, I, I witnessed the birth of Bobby Lane's How is that? finesse career. So we were uh, shooting stuff. You know, I, I uh, worked with the Pure Fishing Pro staff in 2013 and 2014. Yeah. And we were up in New York. And this was when Bobby was, ah, punching grass, mat, frogs, crawfatty. I mean, that was like his vocabulary. <laughs> That's pretty much the extent of it. And we go to this Onondaga Lake to get some content there. And we catch some fish punching and stuff. And then he pulls out a spinning rod. And he's yeah. like, I hear there's a bunch of fish on here that we can catch. And I need to get confidence because we're going to catch. And he caught like 100 on the spinning rod. And he said it was the most he had ever caught A on a drop shot and B on a spinning rod. And at the end of the day, he said he had a ton of confidence in it. And since then, we've seen the guy. He just turned into a wizard. Like you got, you got Brett Ayler and 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 guys like lining up for finesse tips yeah. with Bobby Lane. You remember the clinic he put on at Table Rock? Yeah, yeah, that was badass. All right, let's bring him in. Bobby, you there, man? Yeah, man, I'm here. Good morning, guys. How are you? Doing good, man. Uh, Wow, how are you, Bobby, during this break? Uh, I, I'm sure you got a lot going on there with the family and uh, stuff going on in Florida, but uh, this is quite unique, isn't it? Yeah, you know, it is unique because it's everywhere. It's not like it's just here in Florida or it's in New York or Oakland. It's everywhere, and, and everybody's having to, you know, learn how to adapt. I mean, my kids are inside doing virtual school right now. Um you know, and just lining up what we got to, to do during the day. I mean, a lot of social media and, and uh, you know, it's TikTok is what I said lately. TikTok goes to the clock. When the when the evenings come, it, it gets a little better and you can wake up and do it again. And it seems like it's just a repetitive mess right now. And you just look for some positive in any of the media or news, which I'm trying not to pay attention to at all. You've got a pretty good set up where you are uh there in florida though for being able to to stay at home and and keep the kids occupied and uh kind of do what you guys like to do though yeah i do i'm uh, fortunate we built an addition on the house we had and it's uh, on a little private lake here in florida and i put a big dock out around it so it's nice to take go outside take a breather look at the birds most of the time they're schooling right now you can you can every other hour look out there and see him schooling so wing a wing a chopo out there and snag one three or four pounds or you know it's just it's it's something peaceful it's right it it's like it breaks up the monotony of the day-to-day -day. i mean every evening we go out in the boats um we got paddle boards kayaks the kids can can take a break from what's going on and kind of forget about it and um it seems to really help for sure bobby I, I know you haven't gotten to fish that much. I mean, yes, you've had a few tournaments, but how would you sum up your season so far? Uh, my season so far, if I had to give it one phrase, would be anything but Florida. 
you know, I, I fished uh, I fished an open here early in the year. Didn't do no good there. Went to Eufaula, had a 16th place finish there. Um, then came back and fished Okeechobee, double zeroed. Went left the state of Florida again. Went and fished Lake Fork. Um, almost made the championship. Um, just a just a pound out. Um, so uh, this year's been anything but Florida. Get me out of the state of Florida and I can catch him. But you know, it's 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 good for me. Probably I'm learning a lot. I'm I'm learning that um, Florida is a it's a wonderful fishery. And and trust me, there's still just as many big fish here as there ever been. But these fish are doing things that are different than what they used to do, let's say five, six, ten years ago, and and I haven't caught up with that pattern yet. So I'm excited to get more more time on these bodies of waters. It used to be announced a tournament, show up, fish my eight or ten spots, and usually that was good enough for a win or a top five or had a shot at at least doing really well and. All that's been thrown out the window, so I'm kind of excited about looking to, you know, uh, learn these lakes again, which are super fun to fish. When you say they're changing, is it is it an environmental thing? I mean, we know we've seen a lot of the stuff that uh, comes to mind. Scott Martin posts a lot on it about what's going on on Okeechobee and things like that. Is it right. just a cyclical <clears throat> thing because you have soft bottom and grass lakes that that change every six years? I mean, what what's the deal with the changing? Yeah, I mean, everybody wants to blame it on, you know, the spraying and this and that, but people don't understand. I mean, we've, we had some massive hurricanes a few years, several years ago, and I think the lakes are just now starting to get back from those hurricanes, which brought us so much high water and high wind and destroyed a lot of our vegetation. I mean, you know, without spraying at all, you wouldn't even be able to go out on these lakes because it would be a solid mat of hydrilla. So. You know, we have to keep some some spraying going on, but we're working on, you know, not overkill for sure. But I think these lakes are just going through their, uh, you know, their cycle. We've seen Gunnersville do it. We've seen Grand Lake do it. We've seen um, Texas lakes do it, where one year it's phenomenal and then it takes a year off and then all of a sudden it's back good again. And I think these lakes are going through the same thing, the, the shallow, muddy bottoms, the the lack of grass that got ripped up years ago is is starting to show up again and um, we're taking more actions to make sure that we protect what we got down here and um, the fishing is getting a lot better i mean we're already post spawn and uh shad spawns over with so you know we're a little ahead of the game more than anybody else uh, i know i guess okay we'll equate this to like the midwest like there's some lakes so i was on grand and, and went into a pocket the other week that I hadn't been in in probably four years and I was like I'm gonna flip this dock and I go around the corner and the dock's gone <laughs> and I was like boy that is a that is a twist that was unexpected so is it is it the same after you know like a hurricane in Florida lake you haven't been to two or three years you'll run to an area that you're like I'm gonna flip these reeds and they're just gone you guys are still there yeah the areas still remain the same they just change completely like the north shore of okeechobee which used to be the biggest spawning area in the united states it was seven miles long by a mile and a half wide i mean there was no other bigger spawning flat in the country and you know we've lost a lot of that and trying to get that back but the areas don't change it's just different ways to catch them i mean this year at the at the okeechobee event we saw a lot of swim jigging a lot of canal fishing and and caught a lot they caught a lot of big fish so um you know our numbers are down a little bit but the, what happens is the fish get offshore and they just migrate around bait and until they got more vegetation up there is when those when that when they'll live there year round so um you know i don't think we're far from it but yeah you're right hurricanes come through it it changes the the atmosphere of the the lake for sure and you have to figure out different ways to catch them just like you said that that dock's gone but that doesn't mean those five fish that lived around that dock have moved anywhere no they were gone too that <laughs> well, gone i didn't catch yet. crap around there bobby well, i wasted probably, half an hour you, you probably use the same bait that you used every time you would go to that dock which is pitch a jig or throw a chatterbait around it uh, you so, will even go one step further it was an alabama rig I couldn't even catch them on an Alabama rig around it, Bobby. There were just sad remnants left. It was like they they moved and they packed up the dock and took it with them. They packed that. There you go. I like that. So, yeah, I mean, there's variables and everything. You just, 
you, you, I'm starting to realize you got to keep more of an open mind. And, and a lot of the old stuff still truly works and it works well. You just might have to go a little deeper, a little shallower or move a mile this way or that way to find where your fish have gone instead of just pounding, like you said, the same old dock that you've hit or a new pocket that had a dock in it that you used to always catch a big one on. Those, those spots are changing for sure down here. All right, Bobby, we've had a number of uh, Major League Fishing anglers on the show, and, and we've asked them this question. I uh, want to know your response. What are your thoughts, because of the situation that we're dealing with from a rescheduling standpoint, what are your thoughts about fishing all the way through October, November, and maybe even December? Um, you know, I'm all for, for getting this boat back in the water and, and catching fish. Um, you know, we're, we're a little different. We're a TV production, so we have certain times of the year that we have to, you know, certain dates that we have to try to meet. Um, we're actually um, voting on some things today that are going to see what happens in the scheduling. Um, but then again, uh, what, when does the schedule start? I mean, are we proactive in June? Are we, are we going to be held off to July? Are we? Nobody knows. That's the problem. The unknown is the killer right now. When is it going to be safe for tournaments to start back up? And I mean, that's for all everybody across the board. And that answer I do not have. I guess that's left up to the government and find out what goes on there. But um, I'm, I'm all about getting this boat in the water and getting as many events as I can, even if that means jackpot jackpot and a few of them for sure in all reality there's not very many people in the world who make their living actually fishing uh Correct. do you guys what's the talk been about between you guys as far as talking with other anglers is there a sense of anxiety is there a sense of excitement trying to figure out how to to navigate this and fish and stay safe what's the chatter been like amongst the professional anglers Everybody seems to kind of be on the same page as possibly starting to see some some of the country open up in uh, mid-May, maybe being able to start fishing come June 1st, second week of June. That's what the chatter is between all the organizations from what I'm understanding. Um, you know, and a lot of scheduling later in the year, rescheduling events. Um, but like I said, once again, the unknown is the killer for all of us. Um, are they gonna Are they gonna lift the travel bans at the end of April? You know, are they? And which states are they gonna lift them in? I mean, if they don't, if they lift them in Georgia, but they don't lift them in Florida, then you know, I got a I got a problem there. So, I, I like the way that the the, um, the governors of all states are handling these issues. They really are doing a good job. The stay at home, the somewhat quarantine keep out of harm's way um you know uh it seems like things are pr not getting progressively worse and that's a mm -hmm. good thing right now but you know we're still into when they said a lot of these like florida's supposed to peak sometime this week and and i hope that you know we have already peaked and numbers will go down and things start to get a little bit better but you know i mean you're right we're a small small uh Fraternity. grain and in, in the, in the world out there i mean i'm looking at restaurants all over the world that are shut down i mean there's mm -hmm. billions and billions of people that in or millions of people in them restaurants jobless and um trying to figure out what they're going to do moving forward so um yeah but for the most part the chat the chatter is probably about what you guys have heard which is you know the, the unknown, but when are things going to start picking up mm -hmm. and when are the travel bans going to be lifted? I, I will say in some of the conversations I've had with professional anglers, you learn real quick who the conspiracy theorists are. <laughs> <laughs> we'll move, move on from there without saying anything else. But Jeez. Wow. All right. Bobby, are, are you a tinker? Have you been messing around with your tackle and, and, and thinking of things to do? And I mean, what have you been doing? And, and are you the guy that messes around with a lot of the, the, the lures and stuff? You know what? I'm not. Normally, um, I'm, I'm a more shallow water guy. So I, I make sure that my what I have for shallow water is new, used, some with hooks, some without hooks, just so when the green flag is raised, I'm ready to go. But my garage was a complete disaster when I got home. I mean, we ran pretty hard early in the season. Um, 
So it it was about a week just to get this thing tidied up. For the most part, I still got some work to do, but I don't sit there and play with, uh, you know, 500 uh, jerk baits and put different hooks on every single one of them. So one does this and one does that. Or, I mean, I throw a bunch of plastics in my Bass Mafia bags and I chunk them in my boat no matter what lake I'm going to. I load my truck up full of it and, and then I'm good to go. I kind of, if, if, if I got it, something I got in my boat's going to work. That's kind of my motto. So, no, I'm not a big tinker. I have been tinkering with a lot of eye tips because my kids have been using a lot of my rods and reels <laughs> while I'm messing around. So I have I just fixed two eye tips yesterday and probably ten since I've been home and backlashes. So um, I stay pretty, pretty fluent on keeping my tackle just kept up because of um, – they're learn they're wanting to fish more and more which i love too for sure uh, let me ask you this um power fishing shallow water stuff like that i'm uh, you asked that tinkering question and it kind of got me thinking you look look a lot of the tinkerers are kind of clearer water finesse guys you're talking crankbaits jerk baits yep. swim baits stuff where a uh, visual bite not so much a reaction bite uh colder water uh triggering are there quote unquote secrets, old school stuff for the flippers? Are there certain weights? Are there old school baits stuff, you know, like the, we to always talk about the original wiggle ward or waiting the jerk bait with the rogue. Does that exist right, in the right. flipping realm or is it just so in your face that as long as you got a sharp hook and a good looking piece of plastic, it, there aren't really any of these old school you know secret kind of sensei tricks to do when you're flipping and pitching yeah i mean that's a that's a that's a good question that's a cool question for sure and it's kind of more they're they're kind of secret but everybody has them if that makes any sense as kind of like uh okay i'm gonna flip the creature hog all day no matter what and see how many bites i get sometimes they want something with a little bit of action on it as opposed to a bait that's just going to fall straight. So you have to kind of learn um, when you're flipping or pitching, you know, um, when I'm shallow water fishing, I'm telling you that Chapo has been amazing for me the last couple of years. What size to throw? I see a lot of guys only throw the big one, only throw the little one, only throw the medium one. And believe it or not, they will eat one size better than the other. So you kind of got to to maybe find a bait fish that's floating around the bank and see and match that size with something like that. Spinner baits the exact same way. If you can find a piece of bait floating around that a fish had spit up or got beat up in a school, match that exact blade size. A lot of people tie on a spinner bait and they just go down the bank. A lot of people tie on one flipping bait and go down the bank. I mean, I've caught more fish flipping the general than I have flipping creature baits this year, kind of because we've been on and off all year with the weather earlier in the year. But that non-action um, bait seems to get more strikes than a guy that wants to come flipping a big jig with something else on it. It's kind of weird. There's a time for a jig. There's a time for a, a bait like the Berkeley Power Bait General. And then there's a time for the creature hog. And you got to learn all that, you know, what size weight do you want what how thick is the grass how thick is the the wood you're flipping how how much braid can i get in there what's the best rate of fall all that i think comes with confidence and the more you do it the more you kind of learn um you know this is okay this didn't work let me try this and boom you get a bite your confidence goes up now you know you're doing something a little different than probably what most guys are doing just running down the bank so that's the way i treat shallow water <clears throat> All right, Bobby. Uh, Matt mentioned old school, and I kind of have a stupid question, but I, I really want to know this. Old no school question is stupid, All right, Mark. Old school Every wise, question deserves an answer. Now, listen. I guarantee you, Matt's never used this. All right, but there was an old school weight that I believe originated in Florida, and, and hopefully you can verify <laughs> this. I've got him. I've got him. Of which I know yeah. what you're going to say. There, there was a uh, like a plastic tube inside the yep. weight and, and then there was a screw yeah there was, was a gambler inside. it was a it, it, did that not originate in florida it did it was called the uh it was called the florida rig it had a rattle inside mm -hmm. the weight yeah um and it was actually black and you'd catch so many fish on it it would turn copper um those weights 
honestly have gone away. You don't see too many people using them anymore, guys that have them, hold on to them. But believe it or not, the more I've um, just thrown a, a flat-out tungsten out there, trust me, it seems to do the same. I think it was kind of, um, you know, the, the flapping shad was out for years and that quit working. Now all of a sudden the frog works. Well, they just quit throwing the flapping shad is all it is. Guys got tired of throwing it. Um, you know, you, you, you don't see that, though, with flipping jigs. You still take a jig and a, and, a, and a chunk and you go out there and you catch fish on it no matter what. You still see that with spinnerbaits. You see that with frogs. You just see, you know, the uh, walking frog or a popping frog. Everybody in the world owns a couple of those. They're going to work forever. Chatterbaits, they all work. What color are you going to throw? Um, that rattling weight was a great idea, and I think what, what went on is the fishing was so good that no matter what you threw out there, they were going to bite. We just built that confidence up thinking you need that rattle, and believe it or not, the more I've gone into my fishing, it doesn't seem – it's really about rate of fall, which size weight is best for what you're fishing. That's what seems to make the biggest difference in catching the biggest fish but also the most fish. Nice. nice. So – I mentioned I've I've been to Bobby's place before. I haven't been there since the garage is finished, but <laughs> before before you were on Bobby, I was saying, dude, I said Bobby is set for a quarantine sheltered place because he can literally <laughs> sit on his couch and fish. Can, and that is true. You... I'm actually I'm actually sitting in my boat. Okay. And, and if you guys can see, that's my back my big back door that right. goes out to the lake. Where my dock is right there. Okay, so that door is open right now. That door is three quarters of the way open. That, that is, is a correct. is that a glass door? That is a glass door. Yep. <laughs> somehow it has not been broken yet. Um, somehow the kids have not broke that yet, but it's a matter of time. It is. <laughs> This this just got a little bit more interesting now. <laughs> Don't uh, do it, Matt. Can we? Can you? Can you fish from your shop? With a chance to catch one, you think you could get a bait into the water sitting down on BTL right now, and we could get some live fishing action? <laughs> I mean, that's three quarters of a door. You, I've seen you put it in a hole in the grass that's the size of a teacup. Yeah, I'm not worried about getting it out the door. Um, of course, the bait now has to go over the dock that's about 30, 20 foot long, oh, and then it far. has to go down four feet into the water i'm pretty sure i can get it into the water is there I'm an odd you could get a bite sure right I'm, and there is a chance i could get a bite but i am not going to take any side bets on catching a bat. <laughs> okay no side bets can we get a can we get a try though we can, we can get a try how am i let's see how am i going to do this i don't That's know gonna, are the, all the kids okay. doing all the kids doing homework well yeah let me let me see how i can do this you like, got a cup holder up there that you could put the phone in the in the cup holder and then sit down. Oh, I got all kinds of stuff up here. That's the, I don't think that's going to work. Let me let's see. We got a we got a little bit of time. I mean, what else are you going to do right now? You know what I mean? Yeah, but the whole the, yeah. Oh, 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 there he goes. We still got him. There we go. There we go. So here's here's where we're going to go. There's my door. Okay, I'm going to walk you out here. We're going to come out on. Oh, we're going to do this. Is like the the drive through. Yeah. This is like okay. uh, what Rob does in the drive through. Here's the water. Mm -hmm. Oh, that looks fishy. Of, look at all the bluegill swimming around. Yeah. No, there's a little bass swimming yeah. right there. Pro told me where uh, there's bluegill, there's bass. Always where there's yeah. bluegill, there's bass. I'll show you how dumb they are, to be honest. Uh, <laughs> I, if you ask me to catch a bluegill, I probably could. But uh, okay. here's a little bit of bread. Oh, you're chumming. Yeah, that's fine. We'll give it to you. We gotta your get signal. back inside. You gotta get back in the into the shop, Bobby. Yeah. You gotta get back into the shop. Good. Can you guys see that? Yep. Oh yeah. You gotta get back in the oh, shop oh, though oh. for the signal. Okay. Okay. Oh, I lost signal. Just yeah. for a second, but we saw the bread getting eaten by all the bluegills. Yeah. I'm doing play by play okay. here for see. the I iTunes oh. and Google Play listeners. Bobby yeah. went out on his, his deck at some <laughs> some bluish green water. Looks very fertile. Uh saw some vegetation and then he, he tossed the breadcrumbs in. And I believe those look like long ear bluegill that were coming up and, and eating the breadcrumbs. Is that correct? I got every kind of bluegill that lives in Florida down there, from copperheads to just regular brim. To, to my daughter calls them yellow bellies. I mean, you name it, they're down there. I, 
I uh, have three or four pet bass that we uh, we give a few of those bluegill to every once in a while to keep them healthy. But um, yeah, there's it's it's a cool little place. It really is. All right, it, 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 it's fun. So so my wife is on her way, um, and she'll be able to she'll to hold be able the camera. To do this here in a minute. All right, what are we going with? What's the setup for the fishing okay, from the well, shop? Is, of course, you had to bring up. Oh wait a minute, where did we go? There we are. Oh, that's the palm. I am going to. You haven't been catching them. That's bass. So you don't have any bass palm. Where's the? Oh, you got my fingers. Somehow. Yeah. Now I was hoping to see. Here. You got any bass right. thumb or bass palm? There they it is. They look there pretty is. supple. You've been moisturizing. All right. Now we're gonna go with this. It's easy. Left-handed Revo Rocket flipping stick. I got a. I got old standard on here. I'm sure you can see Berkeley Power Bait Max Scent Creature Hog and my wife can hold it here right yeah yeah, yeah. we're good okay let's see Stand we're in here, the maybe? shop bobby is standing in the shop he's uh, i hope okay. he doesn't break the window I'll bobby's in his there. shop probably what you're probably what 20 feet in your shop then you have another 15 feet of deck and and then you have uh you have some uh myriad of sunfish around so there there are bass around so he has to flip it through three quarters of an open door that is glass <laughs> oh jeez i tell you what we're gonna go half of the quarter door to make it even more chat we're gonna go a quarter what oh my oh, gosh no, no, oh no, go, there bobby go. There we go. so bobby just upped the ante he now has to pitch 20 feet through the shop, through the three-quarter rounds. Tungsten weight, half-ounce tungsten with a, with a Fusion 19 hook on it. Oh, Creature hog. I you. closed it now even more. I so can't believe your wife I'm is letting hoping, you do this, Bobby. I, I'm hoping this isn't the beginning of me having to call the glass guy, but I really <laughs> trust my flipping enough that I'm hoping I can get it through a six inch gap there's one of these ways we're going to get a lot more views the other way we're going to break the internet and you're for your sake i hope we just get a lot more views <laughs> oh man how are you okay, feeling I'm, I'm just lining it up okay bobby's he's doing a couple this? couple test flips right now the door is yeah, maybe that, 16 right? inches open we're talking like a a wide glass door yeah all and glass that looks custom too and then he's got to go over the deck, so he might do a double skip off the deck. Half ounce no, tungsten. Can't touch ground. Can't touch ground. Okay. If it touches ground, then it's not. Le it's it's got to be a redo. Okay. Oh, okay. you're. I'm actually kind of nervous now. I'm not trying to get you in trouble here, Bobby. Oh man, I'm ready when you guys are. Okay. The beast. Have at it. Okay. Okay. All right. Here we go. Oof. The pressure. Boy, don't hit that glass. <laughs> You sure you don't want to open it up a little bit more? Oh, I missed! Oh! I missed! But it hit the wall, not the glass. Yeah. I did three tries. You can get, get as many tries. tries as you want. I'm hoping you can okay. make it three tries without, uh... Oh! Bullseye! Wow. That's impressive. That, okay, that so Bobby that is now fishing. Happened. That <laughs> Bobby's fishing. He, he now he can't go outside because of the the connection. But Bobby is actually fishing I'm right kidding. now. Bass yep. fishing out of his shop where his boat is, <laughs> with a viable opportunity to catch a five pound bass. That is oh, badass. I mean, it would not. I'm leaving it down there. Trust me. I, if he went upstairs, he could literally fish out of our bedroom window. <laughs> Don't tell him that. Gonna make him do it. <laughs> yeah. Do you, do you have? I did not. I haven't gotten a bite yet, but I did make the cast. And you got the bait I back in. Back in the garage, safe and sound. Not wow. that little slime on it from the grass. Does the bedroom there. window open up enough? Yes. I'm not going to. I'm, we can do that on another one. <laughs> Dude, I don't want to be I'm your agent open. here. I'm not trying to. I mean, but what you have here is a golden opportunity to fish a tournament out of your house. <laughs> you fish one period out of the garage, out of house, one period out of the living room, and one period out of the bedroom. And, I, and I'm telling you, I could, and if we were to do it early in the morning, the chances of catching one would be really good. You got the, you just have the kids stand with the scale on the on the deck, you <laughs> boat flip it, they weigh it, unhook it, and release it, and you live stream this. 
Yeah, I, I, I mean, think my, my son said he's in. Come like I, son, like I think? said, I need to be start. I need to start Come charging here. for these ideas. <laughs> All right, let's see. This is this is the culprit here. That is the backlash machine and the one I'm putting all the eye tips on. Do you think we could catch one out of the window or off out of the garage if we had to? Sure. Sure, he said. This is Bobby the third right here. He wanted to come and say hi. He got they get a little break in between their classes. Um, usually about fifteen to thirty minute break between their classes. Nice. Well, Bob Bobby both Bobby. Bobby and Bobby. Here's the deal. You get Bobby. Heck, either one of them. You catch a, a bass on video out of the garage, the living room, and the bedroom. <laughs> and we will debut that show here on BTL. That would you know what going yeah, that would go viral. What do you think? Do you think we could make that happen? Why not? Yeah. Yeah. He yeah. said why he he doesn't get excited about nothing unless it's dad. Can we go fishing or can we go shoot hoops? So uh, that's all he gets or excited about. Or a turkey now. Yeah, yeah. Very he nice. He got his first big turkey this year. He shot a, an Osceola down at uh, Tiffin Bay Ranch, and it had a 10 and a quarter inch beard. An awesome turkey. Wow. Are those the Florida ones, the Osceola? Those are the ones that everybody comes to get. It's a, it's a, it's a rare breed, but um, uh, we were fortunate to go down there on youth hunt, and he killed them big big turkey and i got to sit in there and and call that bird in it was pretty cool wasn't it yeah huh. you got can you have to have the call like the i don't know anything about hunting do you have to have the little <laughs> is it a reed or what is it where you put it in? it was a little box call the, yeah, yeah how do we do it <laughs> yeah, we can't do it yet but we're learning it was fun um i i i practiced and practiced on that call and my son said dad the turkey aren't coming because you're calling and and my call was horrible so I practiced, 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 and uh, two days later we got the call right and uh, called three big gobblers in, and he ended up taking one. Awesome! Of them. Congratulations! Cool. That's cool. Cool deal. Very very cool. All right, yep. Bobby, man, that uh, that was epic. That's a first for BTL and all the years we've done this, but uh, very very cool. And I think you should jump all over Matt's idea. Have that tournament from the house. Virtual tournament from from the porch to the window upstairs to the garage. Uh, you might I even just start fun. in the bedroom, just roll out of bed <laughs> with the jersey yeah, exactly. on in the first period, and then work down to the to the garage, and then finish the day off in the living room with a cold one to fi- to, to to finish out your limit. I like your way of thinking for sure. Uh, that's something we might as well do. I mean, what else are we exactly. going to do? Well, like I said, right now that it's like the clock goes tick tock, and um, you you try to get through your day and be in a, be as productive as you can. All right, man. Well, I want to see it. Please do yeah. it. Send it our I'll way. Say, is there anyone guys, else you can have a house tournament awesome. with? Who else could you, you have a house awesome. tournament with? Uh, could, thank can, you for for doing this. You guys are awesome. Thanks for giving us this opportunity and them cool ideas they're good to see both you guys yeah man uh we'll get through this bobby you know that and uh thanks for taking time out and uh just wish you and your family the best and we'll talk to you soon man i've been painting my daughter's been painting my this is what happens when you uh (laughs) get caught falling asleep on the couch your daughter paints your fingernails she got that for yeah that's the hottest color in oklahoma right now (laughs) (laughs) you said a bottle of that stuff you could buy a bottle of that stuff for like 30 bucks in oklahoma how would you know matt (laughs) well for the fishing lures not for the oh okay not for the (laughs) nail colors oh god come on that is awesome you guys are something and hey you mentioned earlier shaw grigsby's coming on and you said if he's a power fisherman or not i'm gonna tell you straight up Shaw is a good all-around fisherman, but you hit it on the head, Mark, when you said he is the best sight fisherman I have ever witnessed in my life. I have been around him. I have watched him sit around a series of beds on the St. John's River, not have a fish until 1 o'clock and come in with 25 pounds. The man knows what the what I would like to hear him even tell me is how do you know those fish are going to come to the beds you are sitting around? How do you know those beds are the productive ones? Um, I mean, he might have seen them in practice, blah, blah, blah. But he is amazing, has patience, and knows how to trick those fish into sight fishing. Absolutely, Shaw Grigsby, the best sight fisherman I've ever met in my life. 
Agree 100%, man. 100%. All right, Bobby, you and your family take care. We'll talk soon, man. Thanks, guys. All right. There you have it, folks. Bobby Lane. Uh, wow, that is good, good, good stuff, Matthew. Really yeah, cool. That was good. <laughs> Very cool. Can, can Kevin reach his house? The no. pond? The pond? No. Who else has... I mean, is there any way they could have a... Uh, Boyd. A, a, oh. Well, <laughs> Boyd, uh, could. Boyd couldn't reach it from the house like that. Yeah, he could. From the patio? He could from the yeah, patio. Yeah, but that's He could patio. from the window. No, that's what I'm saying. Is yeah. there anyone else who can house fish? Uh, Randy Howe? I don't, I don't know how I don't know how close it is to the water. House fish with a pond. Uh, Maybe someone I'm trying to think of guys who've posted stuff, but I mean Watson? No. 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 I don't know. Where Watson we're... could hot tub fish <laughs> with a jigging spoon. It would be a long cast. <laughs> wow. Um Yeah, we need to get a house house tournaments going. Don't know. We'll uh, we'll have to figure that one out. All right, man. Uh, uh, yeah. What about Odd in that uh, river behind yeah, his house? Maybe could we could we get a kitchen window removed maybe. there? So <laughs> maybe. Uh, wow. All right, I'm looking at the. Uh, I was really hoping that he would. Yeah. Somebody said Odd. Mm-hmm. All right. Very cool. Uh, all right, I got all that out there. All right, real quick, I just want to point out a couple things, uh, and then we will wrap up the show. Uh, I mentioned early, dude, and and you need to watch this. the The performance that Brandon Lester put on the the television show on fishing this one specific dot that was just, I mean, very well known right. for having big fish on it, uh, and he caught some big fish on it. He also lost a big fish on it but he was wrapped up in ropes and just underneath the 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 pontoon boat and just it was very 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 cool to watch uh so the 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 amount of time that brandon lester uh got on on his dock fishing was epic and the way that they captured some of the stuff that he did while catching these fish on the docks was really 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 cool uh the other thing too uh, i want to mention about hank cherry and there was a sequence, and and you guys out there, give me the feedback on the instant feedback on this. I was blown away by what happened toward the end of the show. They showed Hank losing a fish on a jerkbait, and Matthew, look at me. I am not kidding. You could have taken your foot in if you were standing in Hank Cherry's boat and stepped into this fan's boat that was watching him. That's it wasn't how the close. camera boat. No. No. Now, it might have been, but there was no camera in the boat at the time. Was it in his boat? What, the camera guy? Yeah, the camera guy. My guess would be that they were planning on transitioning from the boat back to the camera. Because I've done this since I've I've had this happen several times before. I don't know if it was a fan or a camera boat or whatever, but you hear Hank say, uh, get out of the way or move or something like that. I'm coming. And as soon as that happened, boom, he lost the fish. And all you see is the guy was in, I forget what boat. I think he was in a Falcon. He was in a I, Falcon I bet boat. you he was Hank's camera boat. And they said, hey, Hank, we're going to get the guy out of your boat. Yeah. And he said, okay, come on in. And then as he came in, he hooked up. If yeah. you watched on Cumberland in the Costa Championship, Might that happened case. to me. The same thing. They said, yeah. hey, can we hop on? I said, yeah, come on in. And then, boom, I hook up. And now all of a sudden you got a camera boat that's 10 feet in front of you and you're fighting a fish. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my, I, it was, it was just one guy in the boat. So your scenario might be true, but I was still amazed unless it was the camera boat that was approaching Hank's boat to get the camera guy back in his boat. I I was blown away. Had to have been blown away. And then what do you think they did from a production standpoint? Once he lost that fish? Oh, they had to replay the 2013 Grand Lake about 8 million times with music behind it, talking (laughs) about the heartache, agony, and seven years of despair that he's put up with and how it's now a repeat. Dead on. They really tried to play up what happened to him on Grand Lake because he had such a big lead just at the classic. Yeah. You know, Hank, what do you think? Well, I don't know. That was seven years ago. I mean, what do you want? What do you want him to say? Like, yeah, every time I hook up, all I do is think about it, and I just go put the boat on the trailer. <laughs> no, yeah, I mean. I, no, I'm with you, man. Uh, and, and they had a sequence during the show, and look, it, it's kind of hard to fill two hours. Wouldn't you agree? Mm-hmm. Especially when Hank had the lead that he did. 
But the the fill time and what they did and, and the amount of anglers that they gave exposure. I mean, look at that list right there. There's the list of all the guys. That's impressive. Just on that wow. on the on the first sequence. So they did a really, really good job of spreading it out. Uh, the other cool thing that they did was they had a little kind of in-between segment where they they showcase Roland and Bill Dance and uh, Jimmy Houston for not winning a classic. Mm-hmm. And they showed all this vintage footage, and it was really, really, really cool. I, mm. I mean, me being old, I really like seeing some of that old no, stuff. I do too. It was when Jimmy didn't have the bangs and he combed mm. his hair over. You know, he still had the flowing locks. Uh, but some of the interviews that they did, you know, one of these days I'll, I'll be able to win this thing, you know, blah, blah, blah. It, very, very cool. Would you rather, I have this debate all the time, and I struggle with it. So would you rather be in the position to win the tournament and go out and not catch them on the final day, just not catch them, or go out and finish like fifth, or go out, be in the position, yeah. have the bites to win, know that you had the bites to win, but you lost that fish or another fish and still finish fifth? So you finished fifth either way, <laughs> but would you rather live with it knowing you didn't make the right decisions to get the bites or knowing you made the right decisions to get the bites, but whether it was your fault or not, you lost that fish to win the tournament. Yeah. So either way, you finish in fifth. Yeah. Which it, which one would you rather live with? I mean, the, in the, the grand the, scheme of things, it's a fishing tournament, but yeah. which one would you rather try to have to level with for the rest of your career? That, the latter one would be more difficult. Even right. though you knew you put yourself in the position no, no, that no. you made the right calls? But I wasn't done yet. No matter what, it's still the fact that you did everything that you had in front of you to be able to put yourself in that position. I mean, yeah, are you going to dwell on it? Dude, yeah, but it's just part of the game. That happens every tournament to somebody. Agreed? Right. Somebody I'm talking about a championship a, event. I know, but still, it yeah. ha- it's just part of the game. Yeah. So, I don't know. It's a good good question but at the same time i don't think it really matters if you finish fifth in the Bassmaster classic i don't think people are going to remember who finished i don't know but for fifth? you Did would John you rather f- would fifth? you no you personally would you yeah. rather finish fifth knowing that you didn't make the right decisions on the final day and finish fifth or that you did make the right decisions on the final day but that it just wasn't in the cards and, and you jumped off a winning fish probably have the bites you Maybe would it, rather have the bites. yeah yeah that's just me, though. One hundred and ten percent, I would rather not have the bites because it would dwell. You would dwell with it. Would eat me up. <laughs> I well, that's your personality, though. It would eat me up. Yeah, I I see that with you, just based upon your personality and mm-hmm. how you. Can't, I would rather sometimes you can't let things just roll, and and yeah. I mean, you could take the attitude of that is motivation to put yourself in that position again or you can roll up in the fetal position and be miserable and dwell on the fact that it didn't happen i mean those are your options yeah so i i i would rather be motivated to put myself in that position rather than having it eat away at me all the time i got so we'll see Good show, though, man. That that was epic. By the way, the PBA did announce the senior schedule. They have announced it. It's actually going to start uh, May 31st in Lubbock, Texas. What are the, oh, it's the over-under that it's actually going to happen. Uh, we'll see. I mean, I, they, they had to get a schedule put together based upon if things are okay by that weekend in May. Uh, could they be? Yes. You know, it's. I, I think it's interesting that they sh- they're starting in Texas and not in Florida, but it, it messes with my schedule. I don't know if, if things are good. If I can get back into the level that I was at before this happened, you know, I might be able to bowl and and well, what's two or three else of them. Doing? Well, see, you have people like John Burkett. You ever you ever heard of that guy? He used to be a major league pitcher. No, they have their own bowling alley. He's got home. his own bowling center in his house. Oh, okay. Well, what about, <laughs> what about the 99% of league bowlers and professional bowlers who don't have a bowling I, center I, at I, their house? Honestly, I think there's a little dirtiness going on where they call up the owner and they go, hey, man, I need to go. Here's the key it. to the back door. Keep the lights off. Yeah. You got lanes five and six. Yeah. I, I think that's going on. Now, I have talked to some of the non-senior players and uh, the guys that I've spoken with, dude, they're staying true. They're not doing that. 
They're not doing that. It's like, you know what? I'm doing, I'm staying quarantined. I'm staying at home. I don't want to take the risk. I don't want to do anything that's going to jeopardize, you know, my career or anything like that. But quite honestly, unless you have a, a, a bowling center in your house, mm-hmm. uh, I, I, I think some of those things are taking place. And it is what it is. So as far as my senior tour debut uh, could happen in June, and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll just see what takes place from there. Would you have been able to make that pitch through the quarter open glass door? Oh, hell no. <laughs> I don't know if that is. I'd I have been was, afraid of breaking the glass. No, 100%. I was yeah. like, I mean, he opened it. was probably 18 inches. Yeah. He, do, he did. I did notice, though. Yeah. Now, uh, I could probably, this is a great point. I could probably throw a bowling ball through it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, you mentioned, you know, Brad and I went out. Uh, and he caught the six pounder, almost a six pounder, dude. I, I freaking wrecked him too. Good. I had a blast. Probably one of the funnest trips that I've been on uh, in a long, long time with Bradley. Uh, it, it, it was so much fun because it was four wheel fishing. Good deal. Four wheel fishing, and uh, I don't know if he put a video together on it, but we're we're definitely going to make another trip to that gym, and and maybe we can have a little. Uh, contest between you and john and me and brad on the uh four-wheel fishing i know it's a little bit of a drive for you uh but maybe we can make that happen man we'll see have i know you seen... your schedule is going to get booked up here because everybody wants a piece of you yeah now. have you seen i started uh, i'm not gonna say i it seems like after i took the brunt of the crappie catching uh comments it's like the trendy thing to do now <laughs> it's like everybody's out crappie fishing now well it is fun it is you know especially with everything going on right now they're kind of breaks it up too and it's a great on, time uh to when i that day fish. you guys went so that would have been what saturday when we friday went? friday yeah 15 bass in like four hours last hour pulled the crappie rod out 15 crop i still want to do that man you're gonna have to take me is it almost too late or is it still gonna no, be around no, for a couple can, weeks you can do it around the year really yeah All right, very nice. All right, folks, I want to thank Bobby Lane once again for taking part in BTL today. A great, great show. Tomorrow, Shaw Grigsby, Preston Clark. If you don't know who Preston Clark is, Google that one up. The man caught over 100 pounds on Santee Cooper. I wonder if the fishing guy shows up. Let me try that. What's that? I'm just Googling Preston Clark. Very first thing, Preston Clark Bassmaster. Yeah. At least for mine. Check that out. And then it's also a chef. Uh, <laughs> motivational speaker. All kinds of stuff. Uh, cul- right. He's a culinary hero. Yeah. Denny Brower on Thursday. And uh, we will continue to try and bring you guys, everyone out there, the best shows. Please, this is very, very important. Please review us and give us a rating on iTunes if you're listening to us on iTunes. And make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube. Folks, it helps us out tremendously. If you get an opportunity, please thank the sponsors, especially during this time that make BTL happen. Matt and I would greatly, greatly appreciate any communication with those sponsors that are a part of the BTL lineup. So that's it, folks. Everybody be safe. We will talk to you on Tuesday with Shaw Grigsby. That's it. We're out of here.